Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on, and today we're going to be taking a look at Little Mouse's Encyclopedia for the Nintendo Switch. And I thought it was only fair that if I just covered a game about a cat, I should probably cover a game about a mouse. But that is totally a joke because my selection process is not nearly that involved. But with a game this cute, I really did want to get into it and see what it was all about, but I was surprised about Little Mouse's Encyclopedia for more than a handful of reasons. And even though some of my initial impressions with the game were a little on the fence, the further I got into it and the more I thought about it after my playthrough, the more everything started to make sense. As with many games that I've played in the recent past, actually within the last couple of weeks, uh, this one doesn't have any story at all. And that to me is normally a bit of a negative sign because it automatically infringes on the player's ability to invest in the game and the character. But again, this all started to make sense the further I got into it. More or less, you're playing as the little mouse, and maybe it's the little mouse who is currently compiling his encyclopedia, or their encyclopedia, or maybe the little mouse has already compiled it and is just going through and checking their data. But more or less, the entire game consists of playing as this little mouse and wandering around your native environment, identifying plants, animals, bugs, and insects. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Immediately upon starting the game, we're offered one of four explorable areas that can be explored at any time in any order. There is no locking or completion necessary to play any of the game's sections. Likewise, all of the identifiable plants and animals have already had their encyclopedia entries filled out, and that is accessible from the very beginning of the game. And so one thing I started to wonder is, where is the game in the game? If there's nothing to achieve, if there's no checkboxes, or especially considering that the Switch doesn't really do the whole achievement thing for finding every single animal or creature in an area, or identifying everything of a certain genus, I did have my doubts that Little Mouse's Encyclopedia was actually much of a game at all. Because as the gameplay unfolds, it's, it's pretty standard from moment one all the way to the game's terminus. Walking through any of the four different areas, you'll come upon any sort of inspectable item or creature, and while you'll always be able to pull up an encyclopedia entry that gives you a lot of facts and tidbits about plants, animals, bugs, and insects, which includes what they look like, how they can be identified, and for animals, insects, and even some plants, their entire life cycle. But an additional function button has been included to give you access to a cute animation for nearly every single one of the inspectable items in the game. Some plants, such as trees, obviously don't have an animation, but most animals and almost every single one of the plants do do something to provide some sort of entertainment for the player. But it wasn't really until I started looking at some of the spectrum of the game as a complete experience that I started to realize what it was about. Obviously, if you're a gamer, if you're somebody who grew up gaming their whole lives, you've gotten addicted to things like Contra or F-Zero, or maybe early FMVs like Sewer Sharks, and this if you compare it to games like that, is is not even anywhere near the level of game that those would offer as games. But when I started inspecting the presentation of Little Mouse's Encyclopedia, in contrast to its actual lexical content, I realized that Little Mouse's Encyclopedia was never meant to have been gamified in the beginning. And I suppose the title probably should have given that away. This isn't a game, it is the Little Mouse's Encyclopedia. And in that sense, it falls much more in the genre of edutainment, probably, than gaming as an explicit genre. Visually, everything in Little Mouse's Encyclopedia is absolutely gorgeous, and is rendered like early childhood picture books such as The Hungry Caterpillar. Paper cutout visuals and animations with a watercolor framework, while they may be attractive to adults, certainly aren't meant for an adult audience. And with absolutely no text required to play the game, one of the things that struck me as a bit odd is the level of language used in the actual encyclopedia entries. But as I have been reviewing games for quite a while now, I am aware that a lot of gamers do play games with their children. And so considering the edutainment value, the fact that this is an encyclopedia about nature, the fact that the gameplay is so minimalistic and the visuals are so conducive to early developing people, much less developing gamers, that the content in Little Mouse's encyclopedia, specifically referencing the encyclopedia entries and the level of language used, was quite possibly intentional because the game was designed to be played in tandem or in co-op with parents and children. 
providing quick and simple gameplay for the child, but opportunities for expansion or even interpretation of some of the language used and events encountered. And in that sense, it probably is a pretty perfectly designed educational game. But that being said, while this does have a very well-suited explicit purpose, and while the video and audio presentations are really, really immaculate, there are some things a gamer would want to be aware of before spending their time or their money on Little Mouse's encyclopedia. And first and foremost of which, as with a lot of indie titles out there, is the game's length. Because there is no gamification in Little Mouse's encyclopedia, because there really is no hidden element, and the only gaming aspect is probably some rudimentary exploration, fully exploring and identifying all of the actional elements in the game probably won't take you much more than about 40 or 45 minutes. And so in consideration of the $10 price tag roundabout, the price might seem to be a little bit steep. But that is also in consideration of an adult player going through Little Mouse's encyclopedia. Probably a child of between three and six might get completely enamored of the experience with the animals and sit there for hours. But other than that would just be the consideration that this is more edutainment than gaming. And so therefore, if you yourself or you think you and your child might be more objective driven, there really are no objectives to fulfill and no achievements to gain. And so in that sense, kind of like a walking sim, it's on you to kind of create your own investment. But other than that, looking at Little Mouse's encyclopedia as a full experience, it was pretty rich and edifying. Although, again, very short. And so maybe if you're in the toss-up between buying a very expensive children's book or a moderately priced children's game, I don't know, that's up to your own particular persuasions and parenting. But anyway, that does about bring us to the end of the review of Little Mouse's Encyclopedia, now on the Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw us a comment or a like to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. Because we are putting out new reviews a couple times a week, and whether it's an easy hard pass or an unforgettable gem, chances are if it's on the Switch, you're going to find out about it right here. But anyway, this has been the Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.